So you've been asked to find the inverse of a rational function? How are you gonna do that? I'm Tom and this is Like a Math Class and I'll show you how it's done. Let's get to it. As we know, a rational function is something that looks like this. And we wanna find the inverse of this. Well, there's a couple steps that we'll go through to do that. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna let f of x equal y. That's a common thing that we often do and because we know that y and f of x are the same thing. The only reason we do this is because it's gonna make our, our, our finding the inverse a little bit easier. Next, we're gonna swap our x and y's. So we're gonna make this x and we're gonna have y plus six over y minus two. And now we're gonna isolate our y. This is probably why you got stuck and why you're sitting with me right now. What we're going to do though is we're gonna do a sign kind of a counterintuitive step and we're gonna move this piece over to this side of the equation. So we're gonna have x times y minus two equals y plus six. And now here's yet another slightly counterintuitive step, but we're gonna expand this piece. Typically we don't want to make things more complicated, but this actually allows us to get our y's together. Because now as I bring this y over here and I take this negative 2x and I bring it over here, I'm gonna have all of my y's together. So I subtract y, so minus y, and I'm gonna add 2x. Now we can see that we've got y distributed over these two terms. So now we can factor y out and we're left with x minus one and we've got two x plus six. So again, if we take y times x, we get x y, we get time y times negative one, we get negative y. So now at this point, we can divide both sides by this x minus one and we are left with two x plus six over x minus one. You're probably thinking to yourself, how do I know that this is the inverse? Well, let's do a couple quick checks. Let's say, let's take a look and see what are our horizontal and vertical asymptotes for this function. Well, if you re recall from our previous videos, the vertical asymptote is where the function does not exist. And so that's gonna be when x is equal to positive two. And we know that our horizontal asymptote is when is essentially the coefficients of these two pieces right here. So that's gonna be at y equals one. Now we know when we find the inverse of functions, we're basically swapping uh, our x and y's just like we did right here. This is part of the, the idea, of the big idea of finding an inverse. So now all the x values for this function are the y values for this function and all the y values for this function are the x values for this one. So we should have reversed our vertical and horizontal asymptote. So if we look down here, our vertical asymptote is when our denominator is equal to zero. So that's gonna be when x equals one. And our horizontal asymptote is essentially the coefficients of our x values here when we have the same degree. And so here our horizontal asymptote is y equals two. Hey, look at that. These two things have been reversed. Now, one other thing you could do is you could drop in an x value into your original function and see if the, uh, the inverse function produces the reversed values as well. Let's do that just to do a quick check to see uh, that it's not just the asymptotes that have flipped. So I wanna think about what x value is gonna give me a nice clean y value because I don't wanna make a lot of work for myself. So if I put, x is three, uh, that's gonna give me one in the denominator, that will be nice and easy. So if I say, what is f of three for this original function? Then it's gonna be three plus six over three minus two, which is going to be nine over one or nine. So I'm gonna have a coordinate of three, nine. And now for this bottom one, so if I find the, the inverse f of nine, I'm gonna have two times nine plus six divided by nine minus one, which is gonna be 18 plus six divided by eight, which is gonna be 24 divided by eight, which we know is three. So we have the coordinate of nine, three. So this indeed has swapped as well. 
so we know that we have found the inverse of this function. So I hope that was helpful. I hope that kind of uh, takes some of that confusion away of how to find an inverse of a rational function. If it was, make sure you give me a like and I will check you in the next video.